Hi everyone, this is Ida of Created to Create. Welcome back to my channel. If you are not 18 years or older, this video content is not intended for you. Today I wanted to share a project. As you all know, I have been a fan of Carnation Crafts for a very long time now. And uh, so I have accumulated quite a few of their uh, dies. Not the whole collections, but I do have a lot of their dies. So I kind of pick and choose my favorites when I purchase uh, some. They're very well known for having card frames or card shapes or frames, however you want to call them, that have the whole thing where you can do the, 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 the basic shape of the card and then it has the mats and layers and then it has the one that goes to the artwork that um, has all the embossing lines and all the detail in them. So that's why I love this company because you get a lot for your money. And uh, so I have been playing with this. And, and funny enough, I was watching, Car I don't know if you guys are aware, but Carnation Craft now has their own, um, they have their own channel, TV channel for their products. And they are on YouTube and they are on Facebook. So on YouTube, you would look for Carnation Craft TV. And on Facebook, it's Carnation Crafters. So anyway, guys, um, I w you can't order. Uh, they just came out with a USB that's called Beautiful Calm USB. And some of the things that I've been playing with are actually on that USB. And... Um, of course, you're not going to get the beveled edges that you get with the dies, but if you're doing mass production or anything like that, a USB would definitely be the way to go, and you can use that on your Brother's Scan and Cut if you have one. And um, they have an angel policy where you can, anything that you cut out with your dies, you can sell. You can, any cards that you create, you can sell. They don't limit you to any of that you know quantities or anything as many as you can make and you can sell you can sell so i love that about this company so i created their um one of their cards and i'm going to take it out of here to share it with you but i also want to do a tutorial on the box that i created now it's a little tricky for me to get into it because I'm very bad guys and I keep my nose really really short because I'm one of those people that if I have a scab or something I'll pick 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 so I always cut my nose short so I won't do that and uh, so it's you know I kind of have to get my nail in there to take the lid off because I created a small a little acetate um, cover to it and I love 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 the way it came out so I created first the shadow box um, and I want to do a tutorial. It, I didn't use any dies for this. I just kind of figured it out. And, um, and it's great because you can display the cards in it. And because of the acetate clear window that you put over it to cover it, it, you can, you know, the recipient can display it without it getting messed up, without it getting dusty or anything like that. So that's another thing that I love about it too, because of the edges it's unlikely to get crushed uh, especially if you're going to ship I mean if you just put like a piece of cardboard on top bigger than the card you should be okay because the sides are pretty uh, sturdy on this because I use heavyweight paper but here's the card that I created using it is called what's the name you're too kind is called is the collection and I don't have all the dies but I do have a couple of them and I did go ahead and order the other one. And um, they had a sale. They have a sale for the set of the three card frame dies. I believe are on sale. Uh, it's good if you, if you don't have an account, go ahead and create an account with them. Because then when they have discounts uh, and you're logged in when you purchase, you get those discounts. Um, and then this little tag right here came with another one of it, that, not with this card, but another one. No, I believe it did come with this one. And this is a little Spellbinders uh, tag set, mini tag set that my friend Jacqueline had gifted me. And I love these little tags, you guys, because they look, they're, they're the perfect embellishment 
for this card because this card is so beautiful the way it is that I didn't need to add, add anything to the center but it does have layering pieces for the center and I didn't use them on this one and I should have I don't know what I was thinking uh, but even just by adding this little embellishment tags that I made here like one says it says made with love for you and then I added the this is also a carnation craft uh, die as well and it's butterflies and dragonflies and that is also on that usb that i was telling you about so it's it's beautiful calm usb and i will link what i can in the description box so the paper i don't know if you can see but this paper has uh kind of like a sheen to it it's different than what we use it's different than cardstock you guys so when you use their their perfect uh, papers, they match with uh, the collections. They always do perfect papers to go with their collections. I was blessed enough to have received a pack in my designer, uh, my design team package, and then I was able to purchase another one. Uh, be I think before they didn't ship to the U.S., but now they're adding additional costs, and they will ship to the U.S. Uh, you'll have to check on their website because. I love their paper. Once you try their paper once, you're going to love it and you're going to want it. So I kept it really simple. Uh, this as a side fold. I just scored like a, I don't think it was even a half an inch. Maybe three eighths of an inch on the, the bottom panel. That way I could put two pieces together and make my card base. I haven't put anything on the inside because I don't know what I'm going to use it for. Uh, but I, this would make a beautiful Mother's Day card. And so there it is. If you get that USB, everything that I used here is on that USB except for, of course, the ribbon and the little spell binders, a uh, little extra tag that I put on there. But they have different tags. And to create this, I used a piece of acetate. So I want to share with you how I created this box. If by chance my phone stops recording because it tends to do that without me knowing and then it starts back up again, there will be a part two depending on how much more I have to go. If, if I was almost done and you guys can, I think that you guys can pretty much figure it out. I won't do a second part to it, but this is what the box is what we're going to create. Not necessarily the card, but the box. And I will share my other cards with you on another video. So let me set that aside. The way I got the dimensions for my card is I measured my card. That particular card is a little under five and a half by five and a half. It is a square, but I always like to leave a little extra on the sides just in case I make a mistake or if I want to add tissue paper to wrap them up or if my embellishments are sticking out. So I always do a little extra. So the way you figure this out is you measure your card and then you're going to add two inches on either side so this I me measured I wanted my box to have an opening or the cavity to be five and a half by five and a half so to those five and a half inches I added uh, four more inches two for the right side and two for the left side and I did the same at the top and bottom so I added two more inches on top and bottom so instead of it being five and a half um, so it was five and a half plus four inches so that gave me ten and a half no 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 I'm sorry I'm off it's actually five and a half by five and a half but these little uh, sides that you have here they take up an inch of your box at, on the sides and on the bottom so to that five and a half I had to add one more inch which was which was six and a half and then I added the four inches for the sides and the top and bottom so it was six and a half plus four so it's ten and a half by ten and a half because I'm making a square if I was making a rectangle the measurement would be different it would be more the shape of a rectangle but because this is a square you only need to do, let's say you need it to be five and a half. Add an inch to that because the sides take up an inch. So it's six and a half. And then you add your two inches. So that gives me a ten and a half square. 
I hope I explained that correctly. Uh, if you have any questions, I can tell you how to cut it. Uh, I will try to link it, uh, write it in the description box, but I already have my piece of paper cut out. And, and it's a 10 and a half by 10 and a half. I am using 110 pound cardstock. Uh, let me make sure you guys can see where I'm going to score. Yeah, I think you can see it there. So I am using a um, heavyweight cardstock. So you're going to score at half an inch, at one inch, at one and a half, and at two. I already did two sides. And then you're going to give it a quarter turn like this. And you're going to do the same thing. And so here it is. Here's the half inch. One inch, one and a half, and two. I'm going to give my paper a quarter turn, and you're going to do this all the way around your paper. And I, like I said, I had already done two sides, so I had left two sides so I could share with you. So at half inch, at one inch. Oops, oh, don't go off the line like I did. It's pretty thick paper and sometimes we tend, it does make it difficult not to do that. At one and a half, my paper wants to slide. I'm very, it's very awkward. That's why I don't do tutorials uh, because I usually am standing over my work if I need to. But when you're doing a tutorial, you can't do that. So we have it scored all the way around and it is a square. So now what I'm going to do is up here where I did my last score line, I'm going to go over a half an inch. So at the two, I'm going to go to two and a half and I'm going to just score right down to this second line. So there's that one. And I'm going to do the same on the other side. I'm going to uh, just score in at half an inch. So that means that I at two over here, and then I'm going to, not two, I'm sorry, it's eight. I'm going to, uh, again, score just right down to the second score line. So we have one and two. And then we're going to stop there. We're going to, the opposite end. So we're going to do this on the top and the bottom. Whatever you decide is the top and the bottom for you. It doesn't matter because the paper is exactly the same as long as you're putting your score lines opposite to the top. So again, I'm going to go to two and a half and I'm going to score down to that second line. Just a little half inch there. And we're going to go to eight again. And we're going to score down to the second. I hope you guys can see what I'm doing here. And that's all the scoring we need to do, guys. So again, remember... For a five and a half by five and a half um, box, we are going to need a ten and a half by ten and a half. Ten and a half by ten and a half uh, piece of paper. So now we're going to cut it. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut. I'm going to cut off this whole square right here. And we're going to only leave, well, before I start that, see where I have my score line that only goes up to the second one? We're not going to cut that one. We're going to cut the ones that are all the same. The one that goes down to the four. And I'm going to cut straight down like you're creating a box. And we're going to do that on both sides. The lighting's not great in here, guys. I hope y'all can see what I'm doing. But I'm just going up to down to that last score line right there. Now, I'm going to go directly across the opposite end. So here are the cuts that I made. Now, I'm going to go to the bottom. And I'm going to do... And I'm going... <laughs> and I'm going to do... The, 
That's what I sounded like. The same thing. It's hard for me to see the, the line. So I'm going to go ahead and cut all the way down to that last score line. Do the same thing on the opposite end. Go ahead and cut that all the way down. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take off this section right here. We're going to leave only the one section of squares. So we're going to cut three rows off. We're still going to cut more, but for now, I'm trying to explain it as easy as I can. So we're going to do that on all four sides. So let's just cut the section off. We do not need it for anything. And the last one. I have a um, mat on my desk and it causes... Like when I try to scoot things over, they won't scoot because it's a silicone mat. Okay, so your paper should look like this. Your paper should look like this. Here are the score lines that I put on the top and the bottom, and these are my sides. Okay, now what we need to do, we need to cut more right here. So we're going to go ahead and cut all the way down to that last leave that one little square there but don't cut this this one off we're only going to cut a little bit see there's almost two whole ones there and then what we're going to do the last little square right here you see where the there's a score mark right here we're going to line up with their score mark and we're going to cut diagonally across and you're going to take that little piece off and then on that extra little tab we're just going to just angle it it doesn't matter that one doesn't matter just angle it a little bit we're going to do the same thing over here on this side i'm going to cut all the way across to that last square i'm going to leave that intact and the one before it i'm only going to cut off a portion even though I cut it all the way through, like you can bend that, you can see that you can bend that. Now I'm going to go to the score line. I hope you can see that diagonally across. And we're going to take that little piece off. And I'm going to do the same thing here. Just take a little tab off, little uh, piece off. Okay, we're going to do the same thing on all four sides again. Taking, I'm cutting this all the way down. Now I'm cutting like two and an eighth off. Like two whole squares plus an eighth of an inch of the next one. I'm going to line up my scissors up with the score mark right here. And I'm going to cut at an angle. There. And then I'm going to angle this little point right there. That one doesn't matter. Just cut off a little piece. And here is the last one. Again, I'm going to do the same thing. It's hard to see these score lines because my lighting is not that great. I'm going to cut all the way to the third score line. That We're going to cut off two of the squares plus a little bit of that third one. We're going to line up our scissors with this score mark. We're going to angle right to the corner and we're going to cut it. And we're going to take a little piece off of that so there's that now yours should look like this I think I need to cut more right here like I left the little piece so make sure you cut that you're working in good lighting and not like me because then you got to go back in and, and fix things okay now what we're going to do we're going to cut all the way down where we did those score marks at the top and bottom we're going to cut all the way down to that second score line and we're going to do that at both ends and I'm hoping this is easier it took me a bit to fit a while to figure it out but uh, this should be pretty easy now where you stop cutting on that second score line angle your scissors towards 
the edge the edge right here on this next score line so I'm gonna put my scissors at an angle and I'm gonna cut so you get that see I didn't cut down the I didn't cut past the third score line I lined it up with the corner of my third score line I'm gonna do the same thing right here I'm gonna angle my scissors and cut it off I'm gonna go to the opposite end and I'm gonna do the same thing I'm going to cut up to that line then I'm going to angle my scissors and cut to the corner of that third score line do the same thing here we're going to cut where we made our score line and then we're going to angle our scissors point it towards the edge of that third score line and we're going to get rid of that so your paper should look like this hopefully you did a better job than i did okay on this right here this piece right here we do need to mark it and I should have marked it and I didn't and I'm going to go ahead and do that right now so just grab your ruler and a pencil and just um, line up your ruler anywhere it really doesn't matter as long as you mark I hope you can see that I'm going to go and mark it right there at half an inch see my rulers lined up at the three I'm going to go in between the two and the three I'm going to do the same thing over here my rulers lined up there and I'm going to mark right there so you're marking at half an inch in on both sides and you're going to do the same thing on the opposite end and I know it's not making sense to you right now but it will I'm going to do the same thing mark a half an inch in on either side there and now what we're going to do we're going to grab our scissors so maybe next time when you're scoring go over another half inch and just score down uh, to the first mark and that way you don't have to mark your paper like I just did so I'm going to line up with that pencil mark that I made and I'm going to angle towards the edge of that very first score line and I'm going to do the same thing on either side lining up my scissors with the mark I just made and going towards the outer edge of that score mark same thing here I need your glasses guys and I really need to make an effort to go get that so if you left pencil marks just go ahead and erase them that should be good but I would recommend that you go after you do your half inch the way I did down to the second go on over another half an inch and score at just down to the first one that way you have all your marks and you don't have to write anything put any pencil marks on your paper have my hot glue gun on because if I do this with glue it's going to take longer go ahead and flip your paper over because wherever the bumpy side where you made the score lines that's the direction you fold in so I'm going to go ahead and fold all my lines do that all the way around Jackie, I hope that I am explaining it right. My friend Jackie uh, asked me if it was hard to make. And it really isn't, guys. Um, once you make one, and uh, but you do need a little bit of math. I was horrible in school in math, you guys. And I dropped out of school very, very young. Uh, so uh, if you know a little bit of math, you should be okay. Because uh, that's all I know, a little bit. Enough to get by. So now what we're going to do, we're going to, the little tabs, make sure you fold, burn it, fold those. So you got 
you fold it one way so you have this funny shape right there so make sure you fold it in half and then you you fold it in and you're gonna see what those little tabs do hopefully I won't make a mess with the glue gun so what we're going to do we're going to get that little tab right here this is the top and bottom guys the sides that are not tapered and you can taper them actually I'm going to taper them a little bit because I don't want them to interfere oh, maybe I shouldn't do that I'm not going to do it I'm going to leave it okay add a little bit of glue or tape or whatever it is that you use on that and line it up with the side with that little side of your box make sure it's level flush I hope you guys can see that and do the same thing on the other one you're just going to add a little bit of glue on the tab on part of the tab and you're going to fold that in and line it up and the reason I'm using glue is because I prefer, I mean, hot glue. I prefer wet glue. But yesterday when I was creating it, it took. I had to hold it for a while. And for the sake of this video, I don't want it to uh, take a lot, be holding it and struggling with that. But if I were creating this at home for a card that I created, I would definitely be uh, using wet glue. Some people use tape. I prefer wet glue I think it's dirtier I'm gonna turn that tab in see how you get a little triangle up here when you close that up okay so now what we're going to do is this little piece we're actually going to roll that and create like a little box I want you to see the inside see that you got a, a closed triangle and an open one because this little flap right here needs to line up with that score line right there and that's how we're going to make sure that our box is straight because once it buds up against there you won't have the, the this cave in so I'm going to add some glue down here like I said just for the sake of the, of the video because if I was doing this for um, to at home, without a tutorial, I would be using wet glue. So that's going to hold this side in. So we have this little one square tube or box, rectangle box right there. We're going to do the same thing here. If we would cut a piece off of here, guys, this would kind of cave in and, and it doesn't look good. So I, I leave it the same width as everything else because that way when I turn it in it's going to butt up against that and it's going to stop it's not going to go any further than that so I'm going to add more glue here and I'm going to do the same just make sure it's butted up all the way to the end there's that and I don't have to hold it for long because of the hot glue. I don't know, guys. Hot glue might be the way to go. <laughs> so this end right here, you see those little triangles we have here? You can actually add glue and glue this up like that. And I think that's what I'm going to do. Because I think it'll help me. So I'm going to just line them up like we did previously. See how it's lined up? It's flush. Add a little bit of glue escape there. Okay. Now this, again, we're going to tuck it in the way we did this. That's what we're going to do here. And that's going to go tucked in here. And that's going to create the frame to our box are you getting it now see how easy that was and it's pretty clean you can also add photo corners to here 
if you'd like, but uh, I couldn't find any. And when I tried to use them, they were too big and they would extend further out. They were on top of the lid, so that didn't work for me. Um, let me open this up a little bit so I can get my hot glue in there. Make sure it's nice and tight in there, you guys. And you'll feel it when it can't go any further. How simple was that, you guys? I think it was very simple. Um, stop the video. if You like you can watch it over and over again. Because I know sometimes when we explain things, uh, they're a little difficult. But the beauty of it is that you can stop the video and check and you know watch it again again we're going to add glue to these little triangles and we're going to line up make sure we are perfectly straight there and here make sure it is flush and not uh sticking too far out or or push too in because then this flap you won't be able to uh, fold it correctly if this goes too far in or if it's too far out you'll actually have gaps in the corners and you don't want that I don't have any because uh, it actually worked really well I see a string of hot glue okay so now all we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing we're going to curve this under to create that little tube Make sure it's nice and snug. I'm going to turn it this way because I'm going to lift it up a little bit so I can add the hot glue in there. And I like turning it towards me. How simple was that, you guys? It was so simple and fast to put together. Um, so you could create any shadow box with this. If you wanted to create a very deep shaker, this would definitely be a way to do it. You can also add glue right under these corners. But if you're going to cover that up with uh, some kind of photo corner or something, you really wouldn't need it. I have one here. Uh, this one was too big for what I needed it to be. It extended way over the lid. But if you have a small photo corner that doesn't interfere with the lid, then you could definitely do that. See, these were the ones I was going to use, but they extend too far out and then they wouldn't allow the lid to come off. So there's that. Now I'm going to show you how I made the lid. The lid. Now I know this opening should be five and a half by five and a half. Yes, perfect. So you can see it's right at five and a half and it is a square. So it's five and a half by five and a half. Now I'm going to show you how to make the lid. You're going to take me a piece of acetate. Um, I'm going to link one that I use and hopefully it will still be available. It is by um, Crafters Companion. I know um, Carnation Craft sells uh, acetate too but I have not tried theirs but if ever I do I will let you know let me just take out a sheet this one's pretty sturdy and I will link it in the description box and it does have a film over it so it um it's protected and it's pretty sturdy So we need to cut a piece of acetate that measures um, the acetate for this particular box you're going to need five and a half inches plus the half inch that goes in so you're going to need a half an inch for here and half an inch for here plus the width of the opening so it's five and a half plus a half an inch which is six plus another half inch so you need a six and a half 
by six and a half piece of uh, cardstock, um, acetate. I have my big old cutter. So just line up at six and a half. By six and a half. And that gives me a half an inch to go into the box, plus the 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 front of the card, the front of the box. Okay. And we're going to score that. I'm just going to use my small, my small tool. Let me get the the plastic off of here. Sometimes it's a little hard to find. Yep, yeah, this is the right one. You'll see that this is crystal clear. It just has a protector film over it, but it's very very clear. So I'm going to line it up. And I hope that you can see what I'm doing, but I'm just going to score at a half inch all the way around. I'm going to give it a quarter turn and I'm going to do the same thing, scored half an inch. Give it another quarter turn. Score again at half an inch. And one more time. So until we get all the way around. There we go. So I've scored it all the way around. And right where I made my score marks, that little corner. I'm actually going to cut it off and I am going to angle just a little bit and I'm going to cut that little tab off. You do not need that. Do the same thing here. Not too much of an angle, just a slight angle. So there's that tab. You don't have to angle it if you don't want to, but I think it helps. Uh, when you go to uh, try and put your lid on your box. And the last tab. There. And you're just uh, cutting off right up to the score line. That's it. Okay. So let's fold these. I tend to fold, instead of uh, folding like I do paper, you know, usually when we score paper, wherever uh, the back side is, when we score the top, the bottom is actually the side that we fold to. In acetate, it tends to naturally want to turn up, fold up, so I just go with the flow. Whatever it wants to do, whatever it wants to take me, that's what I do. Because it's already started to curve in, and that's what we needed to do to form the lid to our box. Just take your time finding that edge and folding it in. 